The film begins with a spaceship's crash landing on a planet, this planet being the Earth in the old ages. The collision shocks the area's wildlife, and the ship ends up landing in the middle of a lake. Two humanoid figures in advanced spacesuits emerge from the impact, one of them helps his companion get out of the water, and as he passes out, he has brief flashbacks of the past. Upon awakening, the spaceman realizes that his companion has died of a severe chest wound. In the distance, he hears a robotic call, being a computer stranded in the lake. The man saves the machine and asks in an unknown language for information about the planet they landed on. He also asks about the whereabouts of other ships, but the computer tells him that there are no records of nearby ships. After his disappointment, the man prepares for the computer to download and transfer to him a series of data about the planet, its civilization, species, languages, and culture, something difficult and painful for the man to assimilate. After that, he seems to gain a second breeze and practices his aim with a destructive gun that managed to survive the collision. At nightfall, he makes a grave for his fallen colleague. The Outlander's new mission is to survive the unknown area, a vast forest, using only his gun. In the search, he finds the lifeless body of a whale next to a destroyed and abandoned village with signs of an attack by something other than a human. Noticing that he is being observed, the Outlander flees, but is intercepted by a horse rider who knocks him unconscious and causes his weapon to get lost in the river. While passed out, the Outlander is taken hostage to a nearby Viking village that is surrounded by a wooden wall. In a great hall, young Freya and her father, King Rothgar, have a sword fight. Freya tells her father that she will not marry her suitor Wulfric, a pretender to the king's throne. The battle concludes when Freya's father cuts her shoulder, so he decides to heal her. Wulfric shows up, but his pedantic attitude only makes Freya dislike him and leave. Rothgar and Wulfric talk about how a nearby village was destroyed, and Wulfric tells him that on their inspection, they managed to capture a man, but he apparently doesn't belong to any known village. Their hostage, the spaceman, is displayed in front of the villagers, amazed and mocked by his clothing. Wulfric takes the man to a hut for questioning. He asks the outlander his name, and he says his name is Kanan. Kanan lies to them, saying that he is from an island in the north and is actually their hunting dragons, but the men don't believe him and think it was him who attacked the nearby village. Kanan tries to escape, but the Vikings are too strong for him. After being held, Kanan tries to escape using a burning iron bar, but just before he succeeds, Freya appears to attend to him, as Wulfric requested. Rothgar asks Wulfric about the outlander at dusk, but Wulfric tells him that he refuses to cooperate. Rothgar tells him that Gunnar, the chief of the destroyed village, must be sought out and explained that they were not the ones who attacked him. Wulfric hesitates about this, as he has a grudge against Gunnar for killing his father, the former king of the village, but Rothgar explains that this was because his father was reckless, and he does not want the same fate for him. Back to Freya and Kanan, she asks him if he was the one who attacked the village, but he denies it. Before proceeding, Kanan breaks free attacks Freya and his guard, trouncing him. Kanan tries to flee in the middle of the night, and his plan would have worked, except for the alarms starting to sound and announcing an enemy attack. All the Vikings rush into action, thinking it's Gunnar taking revenge. They are surprised to see no one outside, only to realize that the enemy is already inside the village. An unknown enemy starts a killing and burning spree, a tentacled creature hiding in the stables. Kanan starts chasing the beast, but his guard starts chasing him. The guard is later killed by the mysterious monster, who carries him to the edge of the wooden wall. Kanan calls the creature Morwen, the real dragon he was looking for. Before going for it, the Vikings find Kanan, only to tie him to a rock. There, Kanan has flashbacks of Morwen attacking his world and him lamenting the loss of his people. The next day, a poor village boy offers some bread to Kanan, who accepts with suspicion. The village men try to find out who might have caused last night's invasion. They take Kanan to Rothgar, asking him about the supposed dragon he is hunting. Kanan explains to them that the so-called Morwen also attacked his people and that it lures beings with lights and then murders them. He confesses that he brought the Morwen to the village, but just before Kanan is executed, Rothgar intercedes for him, claiming that he doesn't quite believe his story. Kanan understands that they will hunt Morwen, so he asks Rothgar to go with them. 
The Vikings give him a horse and Freya a punch for the earlier attack, and it is then that they leave the village to look for the beast. A smith named Boromir offers Kanan some mead, but Kanan spits it out. Hrothgar strikes up a conversation with Kanan, and he tells the king that if they don't stop Morwen, the village will have the same fate as his home. Wolfric announces several corpses in the area and proposes to form expedition groups, but Kanan does not consider this plan viable, considering it better to stay together. Still, Hrothgar prefers to go in pairs. While investigating, a severed horse's head falls from the heights to Hrothgar and Boromir. Another couple finds charred corpses outside a cave, and soon they find something dangerous. After hearing the screams of terror from the couple in the cave, they all congregate to go inside. They find a bear and start a fight, defeating it not without some resistance. During the struggling, Kanan delivers the final blow with his sword. Hrothgar decides to spare Kenan's life after defeating the bear, granting him his freedom. The village celebrates the victory over the bear with a feast. Amid the celebration, Kanan appears again, only this time in the people's own clothing. To his surprise, everyone welcomes him warmly, and he goes to eat with Hrothgar. At dinner, the boy who gave Kanan bread appears, and Kanan decides to return the favor by lending him the mighty sword that killed the bear, on the condition that he should tell him his name, to which the boy only replies, Eric. Hrothgar explains to Kanan that Eric's parents died, and they are taking care of him. Wolfric decides to start a game called Shields and challenges Kanan. Several men make a square course using only their shields, and the competitors must climb on them and then grope their way forward. After a series of pirouettes, Kanan falls on Boromir, but Wolfric, far from mocking, helps him up, now trusting him more as the people cheer their new member. After leaving the Great Hall, Kanan meets Freya, who thanks him for helping her father on the expedition. Kanan explains to Freya that it was not the bear who killed her people, but the Morwen, and that it will return any time. Suddenly, Gunnar's Viking group begins an enemy attack, bursting into the village. There is a clash of swords between the two sides, with Kanan and Freya killing a couple of enemies each. Hrothgar encounters Gunnar, who charges at him, knocking the king to the ground. Before killing him, Kanan appears to save Hrothgar, but just as Gunnar was pulling himself together to counterattack, his men tackle him and take him away, claiming they have lost and it is time for a retreat. Gunnar's group leaves, but not without Gunnar cursing Hrothgar, accusing him of being the murderer of his family and people. The village tries to recover after the attack, and Freya explains to Kanan who Gunnar is. Years ago, Wolfric's father wanted to gather all the villages to plan an attack on the Franks, but Gunnar did not show up, feeling this as a betrayal, so both villages have reason to hate each other. Gunnar's group plans on their subsequent attacks on Wolfric and his people. One of them breaks away from the group to pee, and he's attacked by the hiding Morwen in the lake. Gunnar's men begin to fall one by one, believing it to be a surprise attack by Wolfric. Gunnar is left alone in front of the beast, deciding to attack it without fear. In the village, some of Gunnar's men appear screaming and surrendering, wanting to go in so as not to die. However, Wolfric thinks it's a trap, so he prepares his archers to shoot. Among the men appears Gunnar who survived the Morwen and now calls for help. The archers fire, killing some men except Gunnar. Kanan asks them to stop shooting, and after this, he opens the village's gates for the enemies to enter. Just as Wolfric is about to hit Gunnar, everyone sees a series of blue lights catching a man in the forest and then devouring him. The blue lights turn red, revealing the wild Morwen, who escapes into the woods. Now everyone knows of the creature's existence. There's friction between Wolfric and Gunnar in the Great Hall, with the latter claiming that hitting Morwen was like hitting a stone wall. Kanan tells them that fighting the Morwen in open fields is impossible, so they must devise a trap. Wolfric doesn't trust the plan and says that Kanan isn't one of them, so they shouldn't listen to him. The two try to fight, but Hrothgar separates them. The king favors Kanan's plan and says that what he advises will be done. The next day they decide to build a trap at the village's entrance, and Kanan requests flammable materials for some reason. They dig a pit several meters deep, which they hide as if it were just another hut. Inside, several poles are driven into the ground, filled with various oils. After everything is set, Hrothgar offers Kanan a position in the village, making him one of his own. 
Meanwhile, one of last night's victims wakes up surrounded by corpses, only to be finished off by Morwen. In Freya's hut, she and Kanan share a bowl of stew, and that's when Kanan has something to confess. His people, Kenan's society, are actually conquerors of worlds. Upon arriving in Murwen's territory, they wiped out its kind with bombs. The remaining Murwens were hunted down to have dominion over the place. Turns out that Kanan was part of a group of space colonizers, and in exchange for being able to eradicate the Munwer's life, he and his family were given a place on the planet where they could reside. Some time after the conquest, Kanan had to leave for a new mission, but there he learned that one of the Munwers had survived and was hiding in the ship's ventilation, the same Munwer that killed the remaining population. Kanan blames himself for that slip-up, but Freya tells him that he shouldn't be so hard on himself. Likewise, she gives him her family's sword to fight better. They all prepare for the trap, now with Gunnar's help. The warriors open the doors, and Wolfric and Kanan go outside, waiting for the beast to appear. They couldn't see much, and since nothing was happening, Kanan throws a torch into the forest, only to realize that the Munwar is right in front of them. Out of nowhere, the village priest appears praying for the beast to leave, alleging it is a Lucifer's emissary. He's killed on the spot brutally, so Kanan and Wolfric start to run, passing the water trap and using the shields as a platform to escape to the other side. Still, Wolfric falls into the water next to the beast. To make matters worse, the warriors close the doors, leaving the two inside. Just before the archers unload their flaming arrows, Kanan offers Wolfric help by trying to hold him through an outside hatch and manages to rescue him in time to avoid the explosion. While everyone is surprised by the explosion, a new, smaller Munwar appears from behind, in the area where the women are hiding. To protect everyone, Freya decides to attack. Her father comes to the rescue, but a brief struggle against the beast leaves him helpless. As if that weren't enough, the first Munwar reappears from the fire, angrier than ever. Wolfric and Kanan decide to attack together, but they are no match for the monster. Gunnar chooses to help, but he's decapitated in a flash by the first Munwar, who then flees. Eric appears to tell Kanan that there is a second Munwar, so they run to help Freya. Unfortunately, she is found holding her father's lifeless body, who perished in the battle. The whole village leaves the following day, fearing another attack. Eric tells Kanan that he wants to stay with him in the village, but Kanan tells him that the place is no longer safe, so he has to leave with the others on the boats. He promises the boy that they will see each other again and then say goodbye. Kanan meets Wolfric, although the latter is depressed by the outcome, to the point where he does not feel worthy of the rain. Kanan tells him that they must fight the monster together. They both enlist a small group of men to go down the common well. Although the idea is crazy, it's the only way to find the Munwar's hideout. Kanan asks Boromir for new weapons, this time with more substantial materials that he will bring. Kanan goes with Freya and Wolfric to the lake where his ship crashed to recover some materials by diving down. While he manages to bring some things up, Kanan is surprised by a Munwar under the lake. When he gets to the surface, he sees that the boat they were in was destroyed, only finding Wolfric but with no trace of Freya. Boromir manages to forge a new sword, larger and stronger than any other. Already prepared, Kanan goes down the well until he finds a subway grotto. He waits for the others, and they begin to advance. Freya wakes up terrified, finding herself in the monster's nest of corpses. As she tries to flee, one of the beasts finds her. Before attacking, the beast detects intruders, so it abandons Freya to go after them. Keenan's group ends up in a cave with access to a lava floor. Soon they are attacked, managing to find the Munwar's lair and wounding the smallest specimen, but with heavy casualties, including Boromir's death. Freya manages to get up, and they call out to each other. Just before entering a dark place, Freya detects danger, and the wounded Munwar appears, unable to see her and now helped only by sound. When they find each other, both the men and Freya make enough sound for the beast to attack and Freya barely has enough time to dodge the smash. To reach her companions, Freya must traverse a narrow passage, too tight for her frame. With no alternative and driven by desperation, they entrust her with the sword, and she swiftly dispatches the monster barring their way. Reunited, their joy is overshadowed by the grim sight of numerous corpses littering the cave. 
As they sense an approaching threat, they flee, leaving behind the distraught Munwar who discovers his son's lifeless body, consumed by rage. Their escape leads them to the edge of a waterfall, with sheer cliffs blocking their path. Despite their efforts, the slippery walls thwart their attempts to climb. Freya falls, only to be rescued by Kanan. Meanwhile, Wolfric faces off against the elder Munwar, managing to wound him before meeting his demise. In a desperate struggle, Kanan severs a tentacle of the beast, following its trail of blood until Freya intervenes, allowing him a crucial strike. Yet, as they grapple with the creature, Kanan is pinned down by the Munwar, leading to a life-or-death struggle at the cliff's edge. With Kanan's decisive blow, the beast plummets into the abyss, and they return to Wolfric's side, confirming the creature's demise. In his final moments, Wolfric bequeaths the Medallion of Kingship to Kanan, acknowledging their bond. Kanan, however, insists they are friends, not just allies, before Wolfric passes away. Together, Kanan and Freya ascend the cliff, spotting Eric and their village in the distance. Despite their shared affection, Kanan bids farewell to Freya, revealing a personal duty he must fulfill. Watching him depart, Freya fears he may never return, unaware of his true purpose. Returning to his ship's wreckage, Kanan mourns his wife's demise, severing his ties to his past life. In the epilogue, Freya recounts the burial of Wulfric and Rothgar, honored as true Vikings. Kanan, once a stranger, ascends to kingship, with Freya as his queen and Eric as his adopted son. Freya reflects on Kanan's sacrifice, as he chose to remain with them despite his divine origins. 